So you're definitely going to be here, right? Yeah. All right, because i got to drive like 45 minutes to get here. I don't want to waste my time and your time. Just yeah. make sure you're going to be here. And if it doesn't make sense, I'll give you a, a call in Ottawa form. You know, like, hey, it's not going to make sense. If it does, I'll call you just to confirm my battery. OK. Sounds good? Sounds good. Engine. Dude, I've seen your whole evolution of your pitch. That is definitely the, the, the best I've seen from you. Awesome really? job. <laughs> when I was knocking with Ben the other day, which I thought was insane, I loved it. He was trying to get people outside to check stuff out while it was raining. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. And there were little people who walked outside while I was raining. I was like, yeah, this balls guy. I love it. How did a dude walk outside of his house with a baby in his hand in the rain the other day? Yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah it's okay. <laughs> but, you know, you're breaking that preoccupation, which is the first and most important portion of what we're doing here, right? Is we're getting people to stop whatever it is they're doing and allow us to start talking to them about different things, right? And getting them involved in the conversation. Under. What's up, dude? Hey, man, just trying to make sure I'm in the right spot. Would this field be the Morales residence? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. There was a notice that got sent out. The only thing that really means anything to you back in March, they got approved to raise the utility rate 11%. That's on top of the 10% that they got approved for in January. Did you get the chance to, like, look over that notice? Have you seen anything about it on the news or anything? Um, no, not really, man. Okay. Have you been in the house longer than, like, 18 months? Uh, yeah. Have you noticed that your utility bills have been creeping up on you? Yeah, a bit. Okay, you guys aren't spending like four or five hundred dollars a month, are you? No. Okay. We have like good windows. I'm honestly not too worried about the bill. Okay. Nice, guys. The reason I was stopping by, I'm not sure if you were here, it was around 2019, 2020. They switched the meters out on the side of the house. It used to be that old clock. Now it's digital. Um, kind of. All right, got you. That's kind of the same thing that they didn't really tell the neighbors they were doing it. They just did it. They were basically prepping your house for a program called net energy metering. If your house qualifies, you can do three main things. So the first thing is these rate hikes that they keep getting approved to do. It's every single year that wouldn't apply to you specifically. It wouldn't be subject to the house anymore. Second thing is you get a meter reduction on your current cost of electricity, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent based on how good your roof gets hit by the sun, and then they actually lock that in at a flat rate that stays the same and then never changes okay. by producing your power on site. Since you've been here, have you looked into seeing if solar is a good fit or not yet? Um, we've had a hell of a lot of door knockers, to be honest. Yeah, you know I got you. Yeah. yeah, we're in Seminole Heights. I know a lot of people come by. The reason for that, Florida is actually in a renewable energy mandate, so they're switching their infrastructure of power right now. They actually cover the cost for you to get the panels on top of the roof and then you just get a Stico statement that says do not pay, and then the solar is a lot less. I'm sure you've been noticing like more people that got the panels installed on the roof and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Bit. I mean like one or two. Okay, and then the solar guys that stopped by previously, were they just chatting or did they actually like drop off numbers? Um, no one's dropped off numbers. Okay, that's, that's why I'm stopping by. Phase one was when they switched your meter out. Now we get you the report. I do have to go check that really quick to make sure that they upgraded that. Is that on the left or the right side? It's on that side. That side, okay. Do I have your permission to go check it really quick? Yeah. I'll go check that. Do you do your billing for Tico online or in the mail? Um, in the mail. In the mail, so you still get those paper statements? Yeah. Perfect. The reason I ask is there's a bar wrap on there. It looks like this. If these numbers are too high or too low, then your house wouldn't even qualify and it wouldn't make sense and then I wouldn't waste your time. But if it's in that certain parameter, what I'll do is I'll get you the savings report so you can make the cost comparison. Remember, the big thing is the biggest thing about it is you don't actually come out of pocket to make the transition. So I'll go check the meter really quick, and then I'll meet you back here in about 60 seconds. Okay. Let's do it. So this is what I look at. Essentially, I'll send this to the engineering team. This is the bar graph that they take into consideration. Now, are you like more of a mornings or evenings kind of person? I'm going to be back with. Miss Julie tomorrow at three and then Mark at five. So I could swing by probably before two or after six. Um, after six. After six, okay. And then is it just you here or is the wife here as well? Here okay, well. will she need to be a part of the decision? Is she She'll aware be around. Okay, is she aware of the problem with Tico? No, because I paid the bills. Okay, is it on auto pay or have you noticed that like? It's auto pay. Okay, gotcha. What I'll do is I'll swing back by at six and then get you that savings report. We do go by an appointment basis, so can I count on you being here at um, 6 o'clock? Yeah. All right, and then any questions that come up about solar between now and then, just write them down. I'll go over them completely when I stop by. And then if it makes sense, great. If not, no hard feelings. Okay. All right, Carlos, good to be Yeah, sounds good. All right, guys. So we're going to talk today about seven ways to improve appointment setting. Um, oh, crap. 
whole deal, let's make a deal here. Um, if I can just get y'all to engage and pay attention today, I will teach y'all something to learn. You get one extra appointment. So hopefully something y'all take away from this. Get you one extra appointment, like Carlos said. Get one extra deal, make an extra ten grand. So first thing we're going to go over with is about conviction. We've talked about it a ton, but at the end of the day, guys, conviction is the number one way that we have to help us sell deals. At the end of the day, sales is just a transfer of energy and belief between the bridge of trust. And the more you believe, the more you're going to get your clients to believe. They have to really feel that you believe. You can't fake it. They know. So you have to force yourself to believe so strongly that if you were to jump on the phone with a family member, you have a five minute conversation with them, at the end of it, they're ready to go solar. They're ready to get a report. I was just on the phone with my dad the other day just talking about how everything's going. At the end of it, he's like, Jackson, can you give me a report done? I'm like, yeah, I mean, sure. And you have to believe like that. With conviction, you will not be able to sustain the sustaining success without true belief. Discipline is only going to take you so far when they go against stuff. So you have to, like I said, force yourself to believe. At the end of the day, guys, this is a career where we can make hundreds of thousands of dollars. you got to treat it like that. All we have to do at the end of the day is get told no. That's all we have to do. Just get no's. We're going out, knocking on doors, having conversations, and getting no's. So force yourself to believe this is the number one reason that I've seen that you're going to succeed or fail if you lose that. So take care of it. Protect it. Third part, because it's so important, I believe so much conviction, I want to go over a little bit more. You have to believe with every ounce of your soul that no matter what, the product we have, at the end of the day, you're helping people. This is a product that helps people, and you're putting the families you serve in a better situation. So the fact that we can walk away from every deal knowing that we're going to help them, like we can walk away from every deal knowing that I've put them in a better situation, that's what leaves me in a good place. That's why I know I can help out, even if their bill is going up. Regardless of what happens, I know that I'm putting them in a better situation, so that's why I can walk away from every deal happy. Sorry for my crunch, but it's one of the best sellers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Guys, they, they, for a few reasons. One, the insult times are lightning fast. Six yes. days I've had an insult time. I've had 10 days, I've had 12 days. They get this done fast. I don't know about you guys, but I like to get paid fast. Yep. I don't want to do a deal and wait three weeks to four weeks to get paid. I like it to be done now. So that's one thing. The quality of work and equipment they use, it's top tier. They're not using panels made in China. They're not using solar edge inverters, which are bad inverters that other companies use. We use the best equipment. All the quality we have, it, when you compare it to everyone else, it's going to compete and be better. Also, guys, the team at like Steve, I don't know, if, I, I texted Steve at 9, 10 o'clock at night, and he's he's always on the ball. Yeah. I mean, I've been in deals like like the other deal with Hunter, I was in the hood at like 9, 30 at night, I'm texting him to change things, I had to get a roof. He got a roof quote done in like eight minutes, <laughs> so I could add it in. He, there is no reason why we have uh, anything to slow us down. So the team is, they're like the pit crew and we're the driver. They take care of the fuel, they take care of the tires, they take care of everything else, so we can just go as fast as we can. So uh, we've talked about this before, we've talked about this a lot, but we have to set actionable goals in this job. Everyone, like we're all goal-oriented people at the end of the day. The way that we're gonna be successful in setting is by setting actionable goals. So it's important, obviously, at the end of the day to measure your success. And at the end of the day, what we can look at, the only way we can judge yourself is by the output, the work we put in. So it's about, did you put in the work? That's, that's all we can look at. You cannot control how many interactions you get. You can't control how many appointments you're gonna set. We can't control the monsoons that are happening, but we can't control the work that we put in. So place your focus on what you can control, like you know what we're having for lunch. So focus on what we're having for lunch. Just kidding, don't do that. It's extremely simple, guys, and it comes down to just two things. Set a goal for how long you're gonna go to work. So for me, it's typically two to eight. That's a good sweet spot. Sometimes it's 12 to eight. Sometimes it's 11 to eight, but set a goal and stick to it. The thing is set a goal for how many doors you want to knock. Because at, you could get into a day, you go two hours, you might not have one interaction, and you might start to feel bummed at yourself if you're like, dang, I haven't even got a single appointment yet. But if you look at it as, wait a minute, I've already knocked 25 doors. I've already knocked 30 doors. I'm already halfway to my goal. Like, I'm crushing today. That's a better way to look at things. That's how you're going to be able to get through the day. Relieve yourself of the anxieties. Relieve, your, relieve yourself of the stresses when you can actually measure your success in that way. It's about the work that you put in. If you're, if you're just focused on getting these appointments, and some days it's not gonna line up to do that, and that will cause anxiety. So that's all it comes down to, guys, those two things, setting uh, goals for the time you're gonna be out, setting the time for the doors, or setting how many doors you're gonna knock. Obviously, at the end of the day, that's, that's what's gonna lead to setting more appointments, to getting more deals, and getting more closes, and more money in your pocket. Like, it's all gonna trickle down from there. You can't change how much money you're gonna make on every deal. You can't change how many closes you're gonna get. You can't change if you're gonna get to sit down. Focus on what you can control, guys, the, the two things. The time you're going to work and the doors you knock. 
Okay, so getting into like door knocking specifically, I want to talk about generating curiosity out the door because you have to remember guys, people, they already feel like they know why you're there. And if they feel like they know why you're there, they're not gonna be interested. So one of the main reasons that people tell you they're not interested, it's because they're not curious about why you're there. So you have to generate curiosity within the prospect. You build curiosity right from the beginning. Don't waste time, you build curiosity as soon as you get there. You do this through tonality, body language, and telling a story. Us as humans, we love to hear stories. So you have to tell them a story. You have to ask questions like Connor was doing. It gets them more engaged and it's gonna build more curiosity. They wanna wonder. Okay, what's going on? They wanna hear more. So obviously, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Right before you came and knocked on your door, they were just doing dishes, they were watching their favorite Netflix show, and you just show up unexpected. So, of course, a way to really help you navigate through this in the beginning is you gotta know your pitch, like Carl was saying earlier, inside and out. They're always gonna try to take you off track with these smoke trains, you know, I'm not interested, I'm busy, I'm doing something. It will be easier, easier for you to be more persistent the more comfortable you are with your presentation. You know, if you're not comfortable, they're gonna sense it too, and it's gonna be very easy for them to get you off track. The moment they get you off track, they're gonna start to sell you on them being not interested, and you're gonna not be able to sell them that you're, that you're there for a reason. And then they need to continue to listen to you. So the more comfortable you, are, comfortable you are, the better your tonality will be, which that allows you to sound more natural, and you can focus on building more curiosity with your pitch. That's where, when you really get comfortable with it, that's when you can really change the, the minor details, like the tonality, the body language. They're getting really in depth with it, rather than just sitting in your head like focusing on, am I saying the right words? At the end of the day, guys, too, like, when you're at the door, it's, it's the, the words mean a lot, you gotta know your pitch, but tonality is hands down the most important thing. Tonality in your body language and creating emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Obviously, too, that this goes hand in hand with when you're first at the door, guys, you have to repeat things. People, they're, they're thinking about what they were just doing, they're thinking about the Netflix show. So after you get them curious, you break their preoccupation, it's now time to get them to understand exactly why you're there. So you have to say things multiple times, especially for old people, if they're not listening, like I said, they're thinking about what's going on, for them to not only hear you exactly what you're saying, but understand. Because you don't want them to just hear it, you want them to like really understand what's going on with the problem. So you have to say things multiple times. The key points, you know, zero down, the, the rate is fixed, things like that, they need to be mentioned three or four times. Half the time when I'm at the door, after I get through what I'm trying to tell them and say, hey, have you looked into solar? They're like, is this about solar? You know, it's because they weren't listening. <laughs> it happens all the time, you won't believe it. So that's why you have to say things multiple times. Before I even get anywhere near, which I'll get into this, before I even get anywhere near towards asking for the bill, repeat things three to four times before you even go for the ask of getting the bill or the appointment. So for example, you have to say it in different ways too, which is very important. You can't just say zero down three times. And they can say it's fixed, the payment does not change, it's a flat rate that never increases. I just said that three different ways. They're gonna comprehend what I'm trying to tell them. The payment's not going up, they understand. On top of that, to make it more sticky, I'm showing them, you know, documentation about how this is kind of what it looks like. So a big thing I see with people, sometimes it's easier for other people, sometimes it's harder for other people. You have to genuinely care for the prospect. You have to care about the people you're speaking to, and most people, they're exceptionally good at sniffing out your true intention. So it's it's instinctual. For all the time, people have, have been aware of, like, if someone's lying to you. You know, if you talk to someone, like, directly, you can see, if they lie to you, you can feel it in a moment. And it's like, they're gonna know if you're there to try to make a commission, or they're gonna know if you're actually there to try to help them and serve their family. So when you spend time with the people, uh, listen to people you're interacting with, it'll build more trust. The more trust you have, the more they're gonna listen back to you when it comes time for you to tell them about the product. If you're just trying to get through everything without first listening to them, they're not gonna listen to you when it comes time for you to talk. So like, uh, NJ did a really good job talking about something they're interested in. Take a genuine interest, don't come up there and just say, Oh, you know, the grass, your, your landscape is amazing. Like, no, give them a, a genuine compliment, whatever it is. Like, it's got to be something specific to them that they're going to engage with. It shows that you. And that, that portion that you're talking about caring, too, and I've seen people do this. <coughs> I've seen people do this really badly. And then you're just, you kind of cringe inside your stomach. You're like, oh my God. Yes. Because they'll point out, like, oh, you have such a nice house, and it's a complete hoarder bill. Mm -hmm. It's like the person knows you're lying in the situation. Mm -hmm. Versus, I really like that TikTok clock that's behind that thing over exactly. there. Exactly. Right? Like, really getting in and, and genuine. The specificity of it. Yes. Yeah. It has to be something like you genuinely are interested in. I mean, I don't want to say like fake it, but like get yourself to be interested. This is your job. This is a career. We're out here to make money and take care of these people. So get yourself to be interested. This works in sales. We care about people. This is what we do. At the end of the day, everything about solar makes sense. The client simply like um, 
we were talking about with Hunter, the client simply just needs to understand how it all works and why you're there. Trust is the biggest objection we face on the doors because it's all about us being able to get off what we need to say and then being able to listen to it. The more we genuinely care, the more we can build trust. When you've shown them that you genuinely care by listening, showing them sympathy, being authentically interested in their lives and what's going on, and you'll build trust quicker. At the end of the day too, what the, it's gonna help you guys do is set stickier appointments. If you're just there for five, three minutes, you know, just going through everything, and you're like, yeah, let me get you a, a report done. And you build no trust, you build no report, appointments not gonna be as sticky. They're not gonna care. You know, they're not gonna remember you, most importantly. They need to remember you. When you come back in, they're like, oh, hey, Jackson. You know, when I walk into an appointment, they, they know it's me, they know why I'm there. They know I'm coming back in to come in and show their report and I'm going into their house. So a big thing I see too when my people are first starting, but also in general, is we get so um, used to just saying our pitch and not uh, taking into consideration that we have to, everyone, most people do not know about solar. We have to overcome the objections they have. And the thing is, oftentimes with these interactions, people are not gonna say the real objection. Most people have a reason of why they're not gonna do it, but they're not gonna tell you. So how to minimize this is by being proactive and overcoming potential obstacles that they may have before they tell them to you. Because if you can do that, it's playing offense versus defense. Get in as much important info to the prospect before you ask them for the bill and the appointment. Because at the end of the day, after they say no, guys, it makes it so much harder to get them to turn around and say yes to you after they've already told you no. They've already attached their identity to say, hey, no, I'm not interested in this thing, I'm good. Very rarely after someone says no, are you gonna get them to say, you know what, actually, I was wrong. I do want to take you up on getting an appointment. People don't do that. So in the beginning, try to cover as much as you can before you actually ask them. You, at the end of the presentation at the door, you basically want them to be like, Jackson, how do I do this? Am I gonna qualify? Like, how, 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 how can we go about doing this? That's how they should feel. So you can do this by using the slips that you have to show people documentation to get people to understand because, like I was saying earlier, you're breaking their preoccupation. They're not gonna really listen. So show them documentation. Like this is what I'm gonna get you. This is what the zero dollar bill looks like that we get you guys. That right there overcomes the uh, potential objection of I've heard people have two bills. You know, no, we get you a bill that looks like this. Also show them what the report looks like if you have it. Show them too if they're, if they're questionable about the roof. Use, use, I mean we have a great slick on showing people where panels have been uh, stayed on through a hurricane. So you use the things that we have and you know, we'll help you guys out. Uh, another thing we took, uh, Carlos just touched on this as well, but personally for me, like uh, this is an amazing thing is to record yourself. To be able to see uh, 100% you know, what you're doing wrong. A crucial way you can quickly see what you're doing wrong in your door presentation is just simply to record yourself. If you don't have someone to do it, do it with your own voice, you know, your voice memo on your phone just so you can hear it. And like Vanny sets up a camera, it's honestly, it's honestly brilliant. I'm sure you doing this to Carlos doing this for people that have done it, you can immediately see like what you're doing wrong. Like when I saw myself do it for the first time, I'm like, damn, I'm speaking too fast. Like, I need to slow down, I need to talk a little more tonality. Like it really, it makes a difference in seeing that because like you don't understand in your head how it sounds until you actually see it outside looking in. So like, when, for example, when watching someone else on the door, it's very easy to see where the interaction has turned south and you know, where in the tonality, the body language, or the questions they ask and what could have been done differently. <coughs> so it's easy to see it in someone else, but when you do it for yourself, it makes such a difference and that's where you're gonna really be able to make the minor change to improve. So it, like, like I was saying earlier, it gives you immediate feedback from your own perspective and that's what's important. It's your own, like your own perspective. You know, it's not someone else telling you, hey, work on this. It's like, no, I get to see. And at the end of the day, we're our biggest judge, we're the biggest judge of our own self. When I, when I see that I did something wrong, that's what's really gonna stick with me to make that change and fix it. So the number one way to improve is go out and have the conversations. It's not, you know, we're not gonna learn the best from training, we're not gonna learn the best from reading books. It's about going out, having the interactions. You're gonna learn more from 100 interactions than any training or any book. I'm a big believer of training. I like to read books. I like to read a lot of personal development. I'm always listening to videos. But guys, you have to go out and do the work to get better. You're not gonna get better from watching YouTube videos. Yeah. You know, 100 interactions is going to teach you way more than any book. And uh, on the record yourself thing, uh, a really powerful tool with that is when you're in the zone. Because mm -hmm. right? if you're listening to yourself, either you're setting up an audio file or you can get real um, intense with it and literally have it on your phone, you know, you're, you're recording yourself. When you listen back to yourself talking, when you were at your top tier, right, at your absolute best, mm -hmm. that's what you want to copy. 
you don't necessarily want to copy someone else because you're a different person. How you present yourself yeah. is going to be different. All of that's in there. But there's no way you're going to have crystal clear memory of exactly what you said, when you said it, the mm -hmm. body language, the way that you gave that message out. But when you hear yourself, you go, oh, I just need to do that again? Easy. I've done this before. And then you can keep going back to that, using that to actually get you back into focus. Mm -hmm. And you're essentially, you are your own best resource in that situation. Yep. And then from there that you know you can do it, now you can repeat it, which means you can you can motivate yourself and, and Absolutely. And it's cool too. The, the one cool thing about it is like you'll be able to look back in three months or six months like, wow, I've improved so much. Like it'd be a great thing to see. It's measuring the success, it's a cool thing to see. So with that, I'm gonna talk about a quick bonus for you guys, and that's finding your hood. A lot of people have a lot of questions about, you know, is there a, is there a magic hood? Is there is there a magic way to find the best hood? There's not. Uh, the number one way to find the best hood is being there. The grass is not greener on the other side. Once you get into the area, the more you get to know the streets, the people, what's going on. Like when I go into a lake, I'm telling people I'm down on Lake Drive with Miss Nancy over there. I don't know if you know her. I don't know if you know the lady walking the dog that comes out. We're coming out with her as well. I'm making a lot of references. So the more efficient you're going to be at that point to get more appointments when you can do that. Because you're going to be able to build trust with the people. You're going to come up as a professional that I'm doing business in this hood. This is not my first day in here. I've been in here with a lot of customers. I have a project going up two streets over. When you can say that, people build so much more trust. So when looking on the maps, what I like to do before I get out there is I like to look for hoods that are typically a little bit on the smaller side. So you look at the big, giant, you know, 500 houses uh, neighborhoods. Typically, what happens is people will drop off three or four people, whether it's windows, roofing, solar, whatever it is, and they just get often beat up. So one thing, I mean, this is not perfect science, guys. I mean, the best way, like I said, is to go out and do it, but just some things I've kind of noticed. The other thing is to find neighborhoods uh, that are on the smaller side, and then, uh, like I said, looking for neighborhoods that are off the beaten path. If you're off of a big highway, and, like it's just a neighborhood around the big highway, it's probably gotten to talked to more than somewhere that's a little bit off the beaten path. Also, too, I like to see no soliciting signs and deed restricted signs. To me, it's like seeing a welcome sign. I know it's going to scare other people away. So when I see a no soliciting sign, whether it's at the door or especially in the front of the neighborhood, I'm like, let's go. This is perfect. Scare other people away. Give me an opportunity to talk to these people that maybe have not been talking to. And the last thing is, guys, getting into a gated community if you're able to do it uh, without breaking down the gate. And with average size homes, too, like very, very big homes, sometimes maybe doesn't make as much sense. That's a uh, nice thing as well. Those people do not get spoken to. You're going to have more <coughs> opportunity to get off your whole pitch. And they're going to listen more, hopefully get more appointments and get more deals. So hopefully this is something that helps you guys out. That's it, guys. Hey, can you go in a little bit more on the uh, generating curiosity part? Yes. So uh, immediately at the door, uh, one of the first things, obviously, is like, hey, is this the Carlos residence? Yes, this is a good, like, all right, what's going on? Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if you know what's going on. The reason that I'm stopping by today is because there was a notice. It got sent up by Tico. It was on the back side of your bill last month. Do you guys remember seeing that? So I'm like, don't I? I'm very like, oh, no, I do not. What's, what's going on? Yeah, so what's happening is they sent out this notice because it's in regards to that metering. And because of all the people that moved to Tampa, Tico is now pulling 80% of their power from out of state. Guys, it costs money to transfer energy, so everyone's bill went up 10% in April. It also went up in January. Have you guys noticed the rates starting to go up on you guys? Uh, no, no, we have not. Uh, but what's uh, I mean, what's going on? Yeah, so back in like three to four years ago, I'm not sure if you guys were living in this house. What happened was, and this is a this hundred pitch as well. But what happened was, they came and switched everyone's meters out to that digital meter on the side of your house. It used to be analog. Do you guys remember when they did that? Did they tell you why they did that? No, no, they didn't tell you. Well, one, it was the same with them money, but two, guys, they were prepping your home for something called net metering. And I'm not sure if you, did they tell you? Did they, are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. So what net metering is, if your home is a good fit, you're actually able to do two things. The first thing is you're able to lower your bill 30%. The second thing is you can lock in your utility rates. You're not paying for the rate increases anymore. So guys, it's about building tonality. I mean, the first thing is tonality, obviously, but like, you can't just come in and like, hey, how you guys doing? The reason I'm stopping by, it's just, you're not gonna create any interest. You know, you can't you can't get it straight into it too as well. I mean, you can't come straight like, hey, this is the rate increase. Like, tell a story, paint a picture, so tell them about the problem. There's 80 percent of Tico's power is coming from Georgia. It costs money to move energy, and you're paying for it, just like I am. I have Tico as well. Everyone's bills went up. It's like the price of food, chicken, eggs. Everything has went up, guys. So this is what's going on. They have a program called Net Metering. Like, you have to get them interested. They don't know what Net Metering is. 
Like you have, they, they're curious to know more about it, and it's about tonality too. If you come up there and you're just boring, they're not going to be interested. If you're not generating curiosity, they're going to be like, man, I'm just. It, sometimes people say not interested. They don't even know why you're here. That's the most frustrating thing to me. Like, dude, if you don't know why I'm here, I'm literally here to help you. And people don't understand that sometimes, but you'll buy more time with the uh, people if you can generate curiosity from the beginning. Everyone's different. And sometimes it'll let you get to talk a little soft. Hey, not sure if you noticed. You know, sometimes the guy comes up, what's up, man? Yeah, so I'm not sure if you're, what's going on, but uh, this is what happened. Like, you just you get them curious right from the beginning. Yep. And they get them hooked, and then they're going to listen, at least till the end. And then you might tell them someone that might be, oh, okay, this is what the whole thing's about. All right. Well, then, then go from there. We're going to run it up with her. We're going to really build, beat down the problem. Tico's a monopoly. Nickel and diming you straight up. So we got to get you away from them. Yeah. Get your fixed payment. Add some equity to your house with the payment you're never going to cancel. Okay. You work over in Tampa or you work at Brandon? Where you work at? Leroy. Leroy? Oh, okay. Oh, I've been to that one. I just helped that guy. Leroy. You ever heard of him? Leroy. What are you doing? He's, uh, he works for the uh, office as well. He's a, he's a postman. You're talking about, like, he carried? Yeah, he carried, yep. He delivered. Yeah, do you do that or no? No. no? I work in a plant, in a big, huge plant. They really? process, man. Oh, they wow. Do you get turned around or nothing? I work on a forklift in uh, a building. There you go. Wow. Would you rather Load do Load and unload trucks. Awesome. I work that whole building. I don't do that. We yeah. do different things. We got machines. How long have uh, you been there now? Uh, maybe be 20 years. 20 years? Wow. I, oh, my gosh. That's crazy. And you're working uh, at Chris Pia, so you work like under the government, right? No, we like everybody oh. the government, but we You don't get like the benefits, like the We get some. We get like we get the same like we get a package, mm -hmm. right? It gonna change. Post office change. It's not gonna be the, the same better. for the worst. Okay. It's like it's not Why the same job. What I'm saying is my pay scale, I got maxed out in twelve years. Uh huh. It's gonna take them twenty four. Gotcha. Oh. To get where I'm at. Oh, no, wow. like everyone else. Yeah. Wow. How do you do that? Like, wow. I don't know how they do it, but they. You just, did you have to like push they, for it? They, get... they, they raise is, okay, my raises were like every three months when wow. I first got that. Probably People like, go a year without getting raises most of the time. Probably like, I don't know, like, I think every quarter I got a raise until my until my 12th raise. And then mm -hmm. it just, uh, Cost of living and stuff like that, gotcha. whatever the union can get for us. Yeah, or yeah. Like okay, that. that's right, because you union. Yeah. That's pretty good then. That kind of helps out but, a little bit. But uh, now the races come far further. So oh, they're so pushing it out. Yeah, so it took so me three expensive. months, it's going to take them six months. It doubled the time. But wow. what they did, they ain't going to mess out until 24 years. I almost retired. Oh, wow. So you got it. So time. I'm messed out. Yeah, and I'm, on, and I'm on another pay scale. Yeah. I get better benefits. Better uh, benefits. Are you salary or hourly? Salary. salary. I mean, well, I I got a salary. I'm guaranteed with forty yeah. hours. If you work more. Yeah. But we work. We always work more. You get, you get paid me work more. <laughs> yeah, we get paid. Okay. That's Actually, good. our overtime start at nine hours. Like if I work eight hours, and I work what, eight hours that nine week, hours? my I get and I, I work one hour. hours overtime. <laughs> Yeah. I need the same pay scale. My, my old time, time and a half start my ninth hour. Wow, why? How do they, why do they, how is that? I don't know, man. That's you crazy. Got, you got it like that. I don't know. I need to be working for you guys. So I can work two days and get overtime. Yeah, got you. I can work one day and get overtime. That's nice. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Wow, I'll do the same thing. So is there anyone else here? Is it just you that pays the bills? Or anyone else here at the hotel with the bill? Mm -mm. Got you. So, uh, as long as you've been here now, have you ever looked into a uh, into solar for the house? Yeah, I, uh, uh, some people told me they don't do that. But I actually was telling him. Yeah, yeah, they told me that. Now that I've been thinking about moving, I don't know if I want to even get solar. Mm -hmm. I understand I think, that. I think I want to leave, but it's not, it's not <laughs> getting good here. That's <laughs> right. I think, I think it's a. Uh, well, you, you know, there's a trade-off. It's not getting uh, much better elsewhere either. But, ever, ever, but ever, uh, ever, when ever, they ever, start ever. saying that our history will benefit us, I don't want to be paying my tax dollars in a place like that. Yeah. 
Okay. It's not benefit. It's not good. That, that governor we got, mm-hmm. he's fucking it up. <laughs> and plus, then it's gonna, when then it's leave, that will keep us from paying state taxes. State mm-hmm. taxes come from Mississippi, they pay state taxes. Yep. And that keep the roads and all that done and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. This is what keeps us from doing that. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is You're gonna right. leave. That won't be good one. They're gonna leave because they're not, not many people coming in anyway. Yeah. They're losing because people don't want to come to Florida. Yeah. Interesting. This has been there forever, though. They were saying they, they were showing the, the Daytona Beach, different places that they used to be booming. Mm-hmm. Not booming anymore. Not booming. Oh. Huh. They've been coming to Florida. So you have a plan? Like uh, you have an idea of how long how long you're going to be in this house for? I've been sitting for nine and a half days. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, that's really good. So, do, do you think it'll be here probably a few more years? Hmm. You think it'll be here a few more years at least? Well, no, I kind of like working on time. I, actually, uh, a co worker told me she had a transfer close to where I want to go. And I was like, what? That bad? <laughs> mm-hmm. I like, uh, I got to do some things. Oh, it's a little bit in. I'm going to. Put in my transfer and hopefully mine go just fast over. Yeah, what about everyone else? Does anyone else stay here with you? Yeah, but who cares? I mean, <laughs> no, the other people that stay here is my nephew, my grown son. You notice now they grown. Now you're and my building. grown brother. So okay. they, hey, they will be Not on you. have to get a partner or something. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, figure it out. That's right, that's all, that's all but, it goes. Right, be all honesty, ain't nobody here really here for me and my son. My nephew is temporarily, and my brother is temporary. Mm-hmm. They don't know we stay here. Yeah. Uh, right now, both of them broke up with their exes. Oh. They're here. Got to make sense. So I don't know if you got to tell you about the uh, the program that we have. That there's a moving program that we have. So it's basically when you go solar, uh, they're going to contribute. They'll pay thirty percent of the entire project for you to go solar. That could be anywhere from eight to twelve thousand. And instead of you taking it and putting it in the system, if you're going to move, you just take it and you put it in your pocket. Because when you sell the house, the panels they're going to increase the value of the home. Just like if you were to come in and put a nice new pool, you know, you put a pool in your house and the property, increases the value of the home. Now I gotta do other stuff too. They want to do solar panels too. I gotta like finish floors, what else finish you know? house. God did do air conditioning, water, hot water heat, all the big stuff. Now mm-hmm. I gotta do commercial, like cosmetic, and be ready to sell. Unless so you gotta do. I might thing. not sell them because I got a daughter here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But my daughter, like, she got a whole lot of love. I mean, her house yeah. is so <laughs> She got way too much shit. And she, really? she had the downside, and I don't know if she would even want to come in. Yeah. But what she might do for me mm-hmm. is be my landlord. Gotcha. And we both benefit. Oh, okay. So you might keep the house and rent it out. Yeah. Gotcha. But not today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. But yeah. But I got a daughter, this is the thing. I got a daughter in Norfolk. Yeah. And she went there, and she got married, and now she got four kids. Wow. wow. So Thanks. I kind of want to be closer to her. She needs uh, she needs yeah. me. I understand that. That makes sense. I mean, the good thing is whatever. I mean, she got a husband. She's a Navy, but she, she they need that help. Like, when they can't make it up and babysitter her and shit like that, I want to be closer. Mm-hmm. I understand that. And they small. All her kids small. I don't like them. kids real small to stay with people that they don't really know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I understand. I mean, the one thing to understand is whenever, like, so you get sold, it increases the value of the home is one thing. But two, there's a way for you to be able to get back eight to twelve thousand dollars in real solar. Instead of you taking How it, much sold the car? All ranges. Every, it's all different. Every house is different. So we got how, we how got a report done. So it? how it works is the payment you're paying to Tico on a monthly basis, you eliminate that bill. It goes to zero. You don't pay Tico anymore. And you use that money because you eliminate that bill to fund the project for the solar. If we couldn't use the money you're already spending Tico on the project, I wouldn't even be here right now. So that's how it works. And the other thing is you do not come out of pocket. So if they want, if you're staying here for the next year, year and a half, two years, you're going to see savings next year. Then when you do go to move, you got that eight to uh, twelve thousand dollar tax credit. And you put it back in your pocket. So that's how it works. And then if you go to whenever you go to move, the value is going to increase forty to fifty, sixty thousand dollars. It's all based off the system size. I'll show that. And then that's how you're going to see increased equity when you go to sell the home. Just like if you're at an extra pool, if you come in and put an extra kitchen, it's going to increase the value of the home. 
and it's those five. Oh, I plan on doing all that. So do you have any? Uh, do you have like a specific uh, uh, question? Any specific questions about how it works or anything off the top of your head? Um, not yet, but I'm just not sure. I mean, I'm mean, still think, thinking through. I got you. Well, that's kind of what my job is. I just I just give you the information. You know, I'm a kind of consumer myself, so it's my job just to show you apples to apples, show you how much you're trying to keep, how much you can save making the switch, and I just give it to you like it is. And at the end of the day, it's your decision. You're the one paying the bill. Um, the first thing to understand is I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's going on, but uh, Tico right now. It's not right they do it. I know. Yes. They sent the thing. I seen they do it too. So it sounds like you did see that. Yeah. Have you I seen? Mean, I pay bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, most people's crazy. They don't even pay attention to it. You know? <laughs> it goes right over their head. Well, have you seen them building these uh, these solar farms here? Yeah, I've seen them on highway. Yep. So Tico's no Tico's being mandated to build these right now. The thing is, they cost money. They build all this infrastructure. It's all very expensive. So Tico, what they do is they're taking that, they're passing that along with the customer. So we had a couple different rate increases uh, because their goal is by 2030, they want to get to 50% renewable energy. And 100% by 2050. I know it's a long way away, but that's the goal for the state of Florida. So Tico, back in January of 2022, they got approved the increased utility rate because of those solar farms, 19%. And then. Damn. There's no 19 percent Yeah. So that was Jan that was last year, and then that was in January. That they kicked off the year last year. Uh, Tico in April 2022. This is the notice that you got on the back side of your bill. They cited the raising prices of fuel because how they produce electricity. They burn natural gas. And obviously, it got. You remember when gas was four or five dollars a gallon last year? It got very expensive. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it got more expensive for them to produce electricity, so they passed those charges along to the customer. So they got approved to go up nine uh, percent in April of 2022. Did you see these last year? What? Like the rate increases? Mm -hmm. Huh? Got you. You know what, cause They just go. I mean, they I, come on the back. When you know? they said that to me, I was here by myself. Ah, uh, so you weren't even like paying attention but to But now? You feel a little more. <laughs> oh, I know. I, it, I mean, I just cussed them out from having the dough over there. You're going to let the AC repeat your cool down the neighborhood. That's a mall on these <laughs> So everyone's gone. Dukas went up. Florida Power and Light Tampa went up. This was in January of 2023, beginning in 2023. They kicked off with a 10.7% rate increase for Tampa. Again, you know, they can't do it all at once. If they did it all at once, people would they'd be paying money. Oh, they spread it out, so that was 2023. This one, I don't know if Ben mentioned to you, this was the last one to happen. It's 10% in this April. Mm -hmm. So there's been four just in the last two years. They've went up 48% in the last two years alone. Wow. And that's the thing to understand is, it's because of their goal, they want to get to this, and it's not like they're slowing down. Since 2019, Tico specifically, they've went up 62%. And the company that owns Tico, they're out in Canada. They're not even from Florida. Tico. They're on the camera. I didn't know they were in Canada, but yeah, they're a, they're a Canadian-owned company. I don't understand how they just let them be able to knock it. Like, why are they gonna let some other company? Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Florida. That's, yeah. all, that's another reason. Well, There's Tico a lot of things I like about Florida. Yeah, well, it's the same way. You go to a lot of places. Only usually only one company owns the electric power lines. You know what I mean? So they they own the meter on the side. So they when they raise rates, we don't have another option. It's the same for a lot of people. Uh, I mean, you go you go a lot of states the same way. Uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, all the Northeast, everywhere. Um, the thing to understand is they Tico. You know, I thought that was like a South thing with the electric company, like on the whole area. You can't you even know, yeah, yeah, they own the whole. Some whenever I like a bigger place you had. Whenever like a new development gets built, some, yeah, sometimes with the new uh, the newer homes, that's how it is. But like homes that are already built, they already have the meter. They already put up, you know, they already did the, the work oh, to get okay. your the power lines in. It. Tico owns it. Um, the thing to understand is they reported a 150% profit increase in 2022. They made an additional $483 million. Tico's not hurting for money. They're raising the rates. Because, I, the I mean, you, you live longer than I have to know this. When the government, when they want to change something, they do one of two things. They're either going to tax it or they're going to subsidize it. So, like, for example, did you ever uh, smoke cigarettes back in the day or do you smoke cigarettes now? Uh, I used to. Gotcha. Oh, so you, you know, I don't know if you remember, like back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, cigarettes were very cheap and everyone smoked. Oh, yeah, because I used to go for my dad. Uh -huh. I used to go as a kid and buy cigarettes for my dad and send oh, me That's crazy. And now you already know cigarettes, seven, eight, nine dollars an hour. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was everyone smoked, the US government said, hey, we want people to stop smoking. So they put the cancer label on first. That did not help. They didn't get people to stop. So what they had to do was increase the price. 
they learned that from Australia and Canada too. They increased the price, you know, five, six, seven dollars a pack. That got people to stop smoking. That's exactly what they're doing with electricity. They're taxing electricity, and they're subsidizing the other option, renewable energy. And the thing is, that's why you don't have to come out of pocket for it, because they're subsidizing it. Because remember, their goal is they want to get that 50% renewable energy, so to cut the usage in half, how they're going to do that is increase the price 50%. And that's what's going to get people to say, hey, we've got another option, we got to make a change. So it's already happened across the United States. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like everywhere else, but Arizona, they're like similar to us. They're at 60 cents a kilowatt, 5 to 10% of people have solar out there. California, 40 cents, they're closer to 50 cents a kilowatt. That's three times what we're paying. They're at 30% uh, penetration for solar. Hawaii, oh, very expensive to get electricity. Everyone has solar in Hawaii, almost everyone at camp. Because it's Ireland, it's very expensive to get electricity. So you see, the more expensive electric uh, goes, the more people are going to make the switch. In fact, California. Why are the hottest places? Uh, whole, I mean, the hot, I mean, why are you paying more for this? this anyway? So, the, for two, for three reasons. So, for these rate increases, one was the solar farms. And then having to, they have to build the solar farms to get to that fifty percent renewable energy. That's one reason. Very expensive. Passive charges the customer. Number two is the rising prices of fuel. That's how they produce electricity. It's like ninety percent how they produce uh, electricity now. Oh. So it got expensive for them to get gas and burn it so it's expensive for them to produce it has charges the customer the third reason was hurricane ian that happened in fort myers it damaged your, our infrastructure now it's over 100 years old like our electric infrastructure wow it's very expensive to fix and maintain you know anytime they got to send a power line those, those guys make all the money and they get paid well to deal with all the electricity mm -hmm. cost money so that was the third reason to fix all the, the broken infrastructure after the storms so that, that's why they got approved for all these rate, uh, rate increases um, that's a few reasons at least um, one thing I want to talk about is net metering, and that's how this whole thing works. So with net metering, how it works is, I'll just explain these bad drawings. Tico, they have their factory, you know, they're far away. It's not like Tico's close by, they're, they're far away from us. They burn the two things, and it produces electricity, the coal and the natural gas. When it burns those things, it creates electricity, and it has to stay moving. So it goes to something called a substation. You're familiar with those, like where it gets all distributed out through all the transformers? I mean, look, you see, and yeah, yeah, it's like all, yeah, it's all, it's all, it all gets directed. So it'll be like fenced up, you know, there'll be the yeah, chain like fence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that all gets shipped out to all the houses from there. After it arrives to your house, like I said, Tico's factory is not close by. They service over a thousand square miles. By the time it arrives to your house, Tico loses twenty percent of their power because the en the uh, infrastructure is so old. So they write that energy loss off to the government. And then they collect it from the customer as well. It's another reason why the rates went up. So that's uh, a little bit about what's going on. But the thing to understand about solar is obviously when you have the panels right on top of your roof, power is not having to go very far. So what happens is during the day, you know, a beautiful sunny day like we had today for the most part, all that power you take, you're going to produce it, you're going to sell it to Tico, you'll build credits with them. And then what happens is you're going to get a bill from Tico just so you can visualize it. It'll look like this. Um, here so it'll be a bill from Pico and it'll say do not pay it'll be zero and that's how it looks because all the power you're taking to produce from Pico now at night when you, you know you don't have the sun you need the power you just use those credits back so that's how it all works and then the system it produces 100 percent that's why we look at your bill we need to know how much you're using so that it'll produce 100 percent based off of what uh, you used last year so that's a little bit about the net metering the thing to understand why it all works is because Tico, they're mandated, they have to buy the power back at one to one. So meaning each one unit of power the system produces and you sell, they have to buy back equally at one. Whenever you need it, they have to sell it back to you at one to one. So the thing to understand is what happened in California. The, le the legislation changed in California this past April and the electric companies have been pushing for this and they finally won. Anyone that gets solar after the month of April in California, their system, the companies don't, no longer have to buy the power back at one to one. They can buy it back at like 15 cents on the dollar. If you like walk in the bank, give the bank a dollar, the bank only give you back 15 cents in return. Yeah. And it's because the they just they no longer the electric companies they got so high the penetration rate for solar that the electric companies like, hey, we don't want to buy it back anymore. That makes it very expensive for people to go solar because they have to get a battery now, so they can actually store all the power they produce. They can no longer sell it back. But why people in Florida and Tico don't need a battery is Tico buys it all back at one to one. Now, in the future, if they were to ever change that legislation, it's not going to affect you. You're grandfathered in to the system. So if they ever change that meeting, which they will in the future, 
And if you don't already have solar, then that's where it really hurts you. And it gets very expensive. But because your grandfather and them did the one to one, it doesn't matter. You know, just like everyone that already has uh, solar in California, they're fine. It's just people after the month of April. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's kind of like what I'm saying, two sets of people at the post office. Like mm-hmm. I'm a grandfather in person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get a good, you get the uh, better rules that way. Better benefits. And exactly. Because mm-hmm. you're earlier. You're like an early yeah. adopter. So the thing to understand is they're going to give you uh, the payback in one or two ways. Normally it'll be power. You know, you give them power or you need it, you get the power back. At the end of a uh, annual year, if you've sold them more power than what you've used, they have to pay you for it. Now, what that means is you're going to get a check back at the end of the year. It's not going to be like a thousand dollar check. It could be a hundred or two hundred dollars for the power that you've sold them. So they give you back more too. Just and just make sure you know that they have to pay you back for the power at the end of the year if you've given them more. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's uh, one thing. The other thing to understand: um, Do you pay attention to what inflation's at right now? I don't know if you watch like the news or anything like that. Yeah, always. So it's obviously bad. Everything's gone up. The price of food, everything's increased. Gas was high on us. Do you remember? I mean, everything increased inflation. This is the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. It increased eight percent. Food went up eleven percent, higher than everything else. Energy was three times higher in every other category because mm-hmm. the rising prices of fuel, the solar farms, and then having to fix the infrastructure. So they pass all charges. Energy all across the United States went up three times higher. So that's the thing to understand. Um, if we exclude, like if we don't even think about the 19% we had, the 9 and the 10 and the 10% in the last two years, inflation hovers since the 1970s around 4%. Like, so we've had highs, we've had lows, the average for inflation for the last 50 years is 4%. So your utility bill, and let me ask you, like, say you're on the Price is Right, you know, Bob Barker can ask me the question, what do you think like your average utility bill is between the highs and the lows? I'll say one ninety eight. You're like right on the money. It's crazy, like two hundred. An engineer did the report. So um, it's good. You have to pay attention. Most people are like, no, 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 no. let me look. Let me know. So based off of four percent inflation since the nineteen seventies, what that means for your bill is, if it goes, if it stays at four percent, your bill's going to uh, double in thirteen years. The thing is, so you'd be paying four hundred dollars for the same amount of power. The thing to understand. So it's not it's not taken 13 years for this to happen anymore. It's went up 62% since 2019. The bill's gonna yeah. double in three to four years. I mean, prices of houses. I mean, you, this house was probably five years ago was probably half the price that it is now. As far as like, oh, uh, this house supposedly be I paid 76. Cause I got it 99. That's crazy. It's supposed to be worth 234 now. Gotcha. I like wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How the hell? Yeah. I feel sorry for people like me, you know, because they not paying us more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. <laughs> they can't go get a little, you know. It's harder. It's that's harder for anybody. It's bad. Yeah. But that's the thing to understand is like everything's going up, and your utility bill it is going to hit 400 in three years because of the rate. It's been 62% since 2019. Like it's going up. So that's a big thing to understand. That, that's why people do it because they realize they can lock in a rate. It's never going to increase again, it's a 0% increase. And it's also money that you got in equity in your house versus let it uh, throw away. Which the other thing is, did you ever rent a house back before this house? Did you rent yeah, house you rented it back in the day? No, it would be different. Time. What, Tommy? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever rent before this house? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. So you're smart. You own this house, you got I mean, to sell it? No, I rented it uh, a part. I forgot yeah, you. Yeah. So most, most people, you know, they rent in the beginning. I asked me to move here from Mississippi and I like, had, you know, like a vision and it asked me, I ain't too loud. I'm like, I'm gonna rent for two years and then buy me a house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna own it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is good. So, I was like, hey. Because the whole, the whole thing that I'm saying is you rent in the past and know this. Whenever you rent something, there's a few problems with renting. So, the first thing is obviously no equity. If you would have been here, you know, say the last 20 years, you'd have been paying all this money in landlord, you'd have made them richer, you would have seen no equity. Mm-hmm. They would have gained all of it. The other problem with uh, renting is inflation. When inflation gets bad, it hurts the renters the most. All the prices for renters have gone up. So that goes hand in hand with the price changes on renters. I got a buddy now. He's in an apartment. He's been there like two years. And he's just telling me how they've raised the rate on him the last two years. Each year, he can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, then the other thing is no control. Whenever you rent, just like you were talking about earlier with Tico, it's like we have no control. So I think you understand. That's, that's exactly what's going on with Tico. Every time you donate $200 to them to pay for the lights, 
They're not giving you shares with the company. They're not giving you equity. You don't get a return back on your money. You give them money, that's the last time you see it, and then you get power for the money. It's like you're running. It's like you're paying for a roof over your head. Obviously, you've owned this house, so you know the benefits of ownership. The first thing is full equity. Like I've already said, when you have the panels out on the roof, it increases the value of the home, just like putting in a nice new pool. Um, the thing is, too, it hedges against inflation because you're now no longer renting. The other thing is the price changes. The price is fixed. The price does not change. You know, just like a mortgage, you know, you got a fixed mortgage, unless the property taxes got crazy on some people. And then full control. Like, whenever you own it, it's your decision. You've been here this whole all this time. You've never had to choose between, you know, Tico, Duke, and FPN. I'll find the best price. It's just been Tico. When they raise the rates, we got to pay it. And you know this, I mean, if you want to go find a cell phone, you're going to look between Verizon, you're going to look between AT&T, uh, T-Mobile to find the best phone plan for you. So competition's a good thing, but Tico doesn't have it, so they are a monopoly. This is the biggest reason why people make the switch. I mean, it sounded good. No, this, this is this is all there is to it. Right? This is just this is this isn't just me trying to give it to you like it is, because what you're able to do, Shalanda, you're able to take a bill. You're never going to cancel this bill, and you're able to take a it's a liability now. You can turn it into an asset, and you can add equity to your house with it. Versus just letting it go to the rent with people. But uh, how long do it take to pay off the house? All ranges, anywhere from 15, 10, 15, 20 to 25 years, all ranges. But it, from day one, because you don't come out of pocket, you see a savings from day one, and then immediately as soon as the panels go up see equity from day one so it, it's like it's like buying a house you know you see equity from day one instead of you know because like obviously if you had to choose you know if you're looking at two houses and one is uh fifteen hundred dollars a month and the other house is say a thousand dollars a month but this one you get to own and the payment's fixed and this payment goes up and this is rent which one do you choose you're gonna say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna get to own it and pay less so that's all, all there is to it. But I want to go over some questions you might kind of have like lingering. The first thing is obviously how much does it cost? So I already you know, mentioned to you, we can qualify you, zero out of pocket. You're not going to come up even a penny out of pocket. Uh, you redirect in your case your TICO payment to the solar and it's 15 to 35% less than what you're already paying to them. Um, the other thing is what happens to my roof? Nothing, because we use what's called roof tech minis. It seals off the roof, it's 100% waterproof. There's two warranties that go with that. There's a 25 year labor warranty on all the equipment as well as a 25 year roof penetration warranty. We are on the hook for the entire roof for 25 years. Uh, the other question is what happens if I move? So this is a good question for you. Your payments for the next owner, they're 100% transferable with our company. 100% transferable. Uh, the other thing to understand is you're gonna gain 40 to $70,000 in equity when you go to uh, sell the house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other thing is who does the maintenance for the panels so we do the maintenance rain it'll wash it off you don't got to get up there and scrub it or nothing like that uh, there's a 25 year manufacturer warranty on all the equipment why we have the move program and why you're able to see the added equity is because we offer a 25 year production warranty what that means is if for some reason five you know one two five ten years down the road the panels are not producing they dip below what we said they would and they're starting to pay tico again we have to come back out, add panels to the system, or compensate you twice the amount that you had to pay to Tico from water panels that are produced. So that's why we got to look at the bill. The engineers have to see how much you use to make sure we design you know, exact kind of panels you're going to need to eliminate the bill of Tico. Um, the other thing is, you know, when they start saving from day one, because you're walking at a ro lower rate, then you might be asking yourself, you're like, all right, Jax, what's the catch? <laughs> the catch is Tico controls who and cannot, uh, who and cannot, who and who cannot go sold. They still own the meter. So our job is actually design it. If everything looks good, we just submit an application to Tico. It takes a little bit of time, but we hear back that they're going to allow you to go solar. So that's the whole thing, because they still in the meter. There's a couple things they look at. So it's two sides of things that they check. Um, they look at the home side of things, and then they look at the owner side of things. So on the home side of things, the first thing they check is tree coverage. If you had too much coverage and we couldn't get you to 100%, from uh, and eliminate your bill of Tico, it makes it very hard to get us uh, to get the project approved. So that's one thing. We're good there because we can. You know, we have a little bit of tree coverage, but not too much. Um, the other thing is the roof. If the roof came back and it wasn't in good enough condition for us to do the project, which I, I know you said your roof is good, uh, that would be nothing that would stop us. The last thing is the meter. Did you get a chance to check the digital meter then mm -hmm. yesterday? You did okay. We got the digital meter there. Before I forget about it, um, the main panel, the breaker box, is that on the inside or outside? Yeah, so I got check those real quick? Oh. It's on the wall? Yeah, you can turn the light on. I got a flash right here. It's on your uh, right. Oh, yeah, see? 
I think about getting that redone too. If we have to do this, we I got something. a nephew that just, uh, he an uh, uh, electrician. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, yeah, I can get it done. Huh? If we have to take care of it, then that's something that we gotta do. You still don't come out of pocket nothing, but it looks like it's not. Oh, it's just. This is $145,000. Let's take a picture of this real quick. And the one outside is the hair meter on the other side of the house. Right here. I'll check that real quick. Right there. I'll be real quick. Can I get a water from you by chance? Oh, yeah. They hot, though. That's okay. I'm not boiling my teeth. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Unless you want it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you got some. I don't want to drink it. Trying to drink more water? I do at work, but when I get home, um, I'd rather drink juice or something. You know, yeah. Right it's good home. to change it up, not just drinking water all the time. But at work, uh, I am going to be hot. You like caffeine? I like coffee. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like your amperage on the out outside one is good. Oh, thank you for the water. So the other thing that they look at on um, the home side of things look good. Uh, the other thing is the owner side of things. The first thing they check is you can't have three or more missed payments with Tico in the last three years. Have you ever missed any payments with them and had the power show on? I mean, they always send me a uh, found notice by paying me every month. That's why I tell you. You never had like the, uh, the power shut off? Uh, about an hour and back on. Gotcha, how long ago was that? Alright, uh, I don't know if I'm going to. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I was like, hey, he called, he said, hey, Mike, I said, oh, damn, I forgot the pill. And I paid him. Hey, real good, but like, I cut off the time. How long have you been? Like, you live in the town, like, you know. About six months ago? No, that, that's, a, that's okay. I mean, but I, that's all the time I got cut off. Okay. Probably decades. It ain't going to turn off then, look like. Right? No, I just have to got to pay them. They, they be that's the right. same month. I mean, yep. they be on my ass. I don't know why. I think everybody up great. Mine ain't never I, been double. I doubt I don't like to be before we turned on like a week before we, they still be on. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't like they turned on on. <laughs> really, we paying our bills all the time. We, 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 hey, we need a stench and edge it. Wait a minute, don't turn them off. <laughs> yeah, they ain't nothing wrong with them. They're quick with it. It's because that digital meter, you know, they don't have to come out here. They do it, they do it from not even coming out here. And I don't have people come out here. They do? Yeah. Really? I remember one time I looked out like, hey, he was like, well, you ain't paying. I said, can I pay you? He said, nah, you got to call. I said, can you wait? He was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll be like that. That's why most of my bills come right out my check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're smart. That's what you do. Oh, yeah. Thing. My fucking light bill, my water bill, that's all the thing. I agree. We should be fine there. Um, the other thing is the D. Your name has to be on the D of the house. Oh, that's good. That's good there. And then the last thing is your credit does have to be above 650. Do you know if you fall in that category? Yeah, I'm about that. Right around there? Never seen it. Okay. It used to be great, but I got to the point where I ain't getting that credit card. You know how it is, though. It's, it's, I'm just making just regular payments. They ain't paying shooting. them down no more. It's always shooting all over the place. Six, 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 six. Okay, cool. We should be fine. Um, that's credit card. I don't owe nobody. What I'm saying is they look I ain't, ain't like I, I, I don't owe nobody. I ain't late payment on nothing. Everything yeah. I got, I'm paying on time. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the last thing I want to show you is this here. So it's all like it's said, maxed out credit cards. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, uh, um, so it's all based off the system size, the home value. So yours is a 10 kilowatt size system, a little, it's like a 10.5 or 10.3 or something. So it'd be a little over 59K. It goes in, increase the value of the home. That's a study done by Berkeley National. Um, so I'm gonna pull up the uh, design real quick. 
Oh, well, last thing too, I don't know if Ben got the chance to tell you just about a little bit about the company. Um, mm -hmm. So the name of our company is uh, this is us on Google here. Um, we have 4.7, 374 reviews. Thing about our company, we've been in business over 16 years. We did roofing for 10 years, then we have a uh, solar department for the last six years as well. Not, it's not our first you know, band for this company. The other thing, have you ever heard of by chance? No? So they do, uh, they do ACs and a bunch of other things, but it's a big uh, corporation out in uh, Clearwater. We own the company as well. We're all, we're all part of ownership with them, so just so you know that as well. And then we own a company, it's called so we do roofing, as well as solar, and AC. Do you have, um, do you have Wi-Fi here by chance? Uh -huh. can, I, uh, can I steal it from you? Yeah, the T-Mobile. Yeah. No, you're okay. I I got service in here. It's not it's not too bad. It, it's I working. still need to know my bed. Yeah, you're like not asking you. Yeah. I'm gonna figure that. <laughs> so I'm pull up the uh, design here. Thank you so much. Right now, it looks like your highest bills um are July and August at two forty-seven. Yeah. You didn't much in February. You used some heat in February. No. no. I mean, I don't know what was going on. Yeah, something, something, something was going Maybe on. Maybe I had some company. I don't know. Yeah, no, but yeah, it, yeah, that could have been cut down a couple parties. Yeah, the highest <laughs> I'm talking about some, some, some uh, guest house guests. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they were one on girlfriend. So here's the uh, here's the design uh, for your home. So just a little technical information about the system size, the type of panels, the type of inverter. Uh, the only thing really to understand is last year you used 12,893. We guarantee your production of the system for 25 years, produce 101% 0.4 of what you need. This is where they use everything as far as like the, uh, the panels themselves. So they'll go back in front here. And then they're all black too. They're not like the blue ones with the silver lining. It's all black. That's a lot of time. Yes, yeah, just because you're built a little higher. That's all. But it's all just based off of, it's all based off of how many, um, the, all the amount of panels you need is just based off of the production or the usage. We well, use this if you get away from the tree too. You have a tree here. I don't know if this is this is the front here right here, right? Yeah, that's a tree. Gotcha. So they want to get away. They get away from the tree. So using these sides here. Yeah, uh, we ain't no more nothing. Yeah. Does that make sense where they put it all? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, because it won't. It's, it won't be a shade at all. Yep. What it comes down to, if we can get you approved, and this will fix in the rate at your electricity at 186, and you won't come out of pocket for it, and I'll take care of all the electric in the house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what's a good email address? First and last name. And what's your What's your last name? Oh, it's simple. Oh, no numbers, no underscores. No, that's just a grant. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or I yeah. Ask me to use my name. Yeah. And then, what's your What's your birthday? You're a Scorpio. Me too. Ten, ten. I'm, I'm 11, 12. I'm right next to you. Are you Sagittarius? Are you cooler than I am? Dang it. I love you. <laughs> and then. Here. From work, before taxes, insurance, health insurance, I think gets taken out of it. What's like annual income? Yeah, overtime money. Alrighty. I mean, it, it varies. Gotcha. I ain't do that much overtime. And then do you have I any? I don't do that much overtime no more. Do you have any uh, spouse or partner, or anyone that else has income in the household? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's and then fine. you said you own you own this home, right? Perfect. And then your employer name it's. Okay. And then what is the uh, last four of your social? And then do you have access to that email on your phone? You want to pull it up on What kind of phone is that? So it should be from uh, Google. Okay. And that'll be the owner side of things, and then the other, I'm getting right on this side of it, that's all the home side of things. So you can see it here. Before the tax credit, it's 45. You're going to get tax credit back next year of 13783 And then it's 32 is the net cost. And that's all for the uh, payments of the uh, 185. Let me go back over what you just said. Yeah, so before uh, it's the 180, 180 and then the amount before tax fix this, you're going to get a tax credit back next year. So you go to your taxes of $13,783. That tax credit with the amount of the net cost used this year. So that's the net cost for the system. But the payments all for the 186. So that all works and then all for, for that there. Does that make sense? Okay. But from from day one, my payment gonna be from this. Yes, one eighty six. Actually, you only have it for sixty days. Right. Oh, you don't get a first one for sixty days. So it takes a little bit of time. You just follow the brick road to the issue there. But do you have to pay like one of my coworkers? He was trying to explain to me how he was saying that he paid 
a Kiko beer, light beer to his, I mean, in a certain kind of beer until uh, light beer got to be like, showed him like 20 bottles. So that's why the system will produce a little bit more than what you actually need, so it gets rid of that bill. Now, if you have a little extra people here, don't throw no parties or nothing. Because it's all based off the last 12 months that you used to. You know. so, so how it work? Will I get like a light beer and a 186? It'll be the 186 and because you produce a little bit more, it's going to uh, make it down to where it's zero. Now, if you use a little bit more power, you have to get it from Tico, the bill could be 10 to 15 dollars. Oh, okay. So you're saying you go over 186? If you go over, yeah. If you use more power, it's how it works. It's like paying a dollar for the first part of your gas tank and then whatever left Yeah, yeah. Gas. Like if, if, you, if you had to pull anything from Tico, you know, then, then you, that's when the bill could be $15. It's all set up to where it's going to be. That's why we produce a little bit more. Based off of your uh, usage, the system's going to produce a little bit more than what you need. That one, uh, 1. 4 percent to get rid of that extra $15 in the bill. Okay, Does that make sense? Okay. I should just do it for you. It makes it really easy. And just choose whichever one you like. How did you do it? Oh, they just pre, they just pre do it. Um, it's all just pre done the man. Put the bottom there, the bottom uh, left. Right here? Yep. It'll be about seven or so. I and mean, then you'll get all this uh, in paper in like three weeks. You have a copy of this in your email. I'm saying. I can read it. It's going to be still on my phone? Email. Yeah, it's in your email. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, you still have that. But I'm just saying, cause people like to get the paper copy too. And then you just set up with whatever uh, bank you normally use. For the uh, main page, you just set it up so you know, it'll be an automatic for you. But it'll be about 60 days. How long will it be for me to for the time to get up? Um, if we get everything done right, it should be about two weeks. Mm -hmm. so, who's the dog? Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yours? My nephew. He's the cutest. He's the cutest little thing. Is, um, he was wanting to tear my ankles when I was walking out there. I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. well, I went to visit. I went home like a week or two ago and I had a nephew that broke up with his girlfriend down. Oh my god, what's going on everybody? Breakup season? I mean, I got, I grew up with all boys, so they... taking care of the whole family. When they break up with their girlfriend, they family, uh, he, uh, the girl didn't want the dog, so he did, he broke the dog. Wow. And I've had a dog, so my dog, I'm still heartbroken on love, so... What's the dog's name? That's King right there. King? Yeah, I like King. that. King. My dog I had was Lala. Yeah, she's a little, she's a little dog too, like, when yeah, she's bigger than that. This is a Martise. That's a uh, gypsy. 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 <laughs> yeah, he used to, he, he probably don't calm down now, but he was when he used to first got he was doing that sort of thing. He, He's so cute. He yeah. He's so cute. He like grabs on me with his little paws. <laughs> 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 Alright, we're going to go ahead and get this thing going. Alright, y'all. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We have to pay like a fee for sending one of our guys out. 25 year inverter manufacturer warranty as well as a leak free roof penetration warranty all 25 years. The workmanship and materials and mounting and anchor system all 25 years. And then the, there's 24 system system monitoring and then annual system diagnostic checkup like we monitor the system and we'll check it up every year to make sure it's going to be on par to produce that 13,000 that we said it was going to. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, I don't your email. It should have your email. Okay. And then just click on um, I agree right here. I'll put the agreement. And then continue. And then next. And I'm going to blow some up. I'm just going to tap right there. And it'll just put it in fully perfect. It's all tiny. Click next. And then click there as well. And you'll get this sent to your email. And click the save. Um, and then a little bit about the process as well. We will finish up the. Uh, we got enough light outside. So we'll go and get finished up with the site survey, but so we sent the application uh, came with this approved, so it's congrats, we got everything done. Um, so the next thing is we gotta do the site survey. I'm gonna take a couple pictures of the house, I gotta get another picture of the meter outside, I'll have to get the but am I able to get into the back here? Okay, I'll have to get in the back to get all pictures of all four sides of the house. Um, other than that, we have to do the engineering. And at the same time we'll be pulling permits now as well get the process started and then after engineering permits they'll schedule for the in install so from here you know get site survey get permits done it'll take about two weeks like i said maybe three i mean usually usually towards the end of two weeks you get in like today's friday you got a full two weeks so like probably towards the uh, next two, <laughs> two fridays should be able to get you scheduled um in like three days you'll get a call from cat like our lady our operations manager handles everything any questions you can ask her uh i want to have my phone number so let me text you before i forget um, the phone number is 813, you said 08. Okay, I just texted you, but like I said, you'll get a call from Kat, she'll uh, you know, let you know what's going on with the process, like your engineering area, what's going on. Kat. Kat. She's super sweet. Okay. She's super I didn't want to make sure that I'm um, talking to anybody. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was like, take call in my life. No, you're you're okay. Um, the other thing after that, we have to, after um, we actually do the installation, we have to schedule for what's called a PTO. That's the permission operate. That's where you get the final inspection done by uh, by Tito. So after, sorry, just to make sure you know it's all. So after it's installed, the, they have to do the final inspection with Tico. It could take anywhere from two weeks to get Tico out here to 30 days. But remember, you're not gonna have your first payment until uh, 60 days after install. So you're not gonna, uh, uh, the system that gets turned on after Tico comes and inspects it. You to make sure all the connections are there properly after it's all inspected. Turned on, you're definitely start producing the power and sell back, and then you'll have a first payment for 60 days. All right, um, well, cool. I mean, that's all there is to it. So, the only thing I want to ask this is like, for you, what's like the biggest reason, like, after everything went over with you, like, what makes the most sense to you after everything went over? I just always like, that. I don't know, this is a new day. I mean, this is the, the, the beginning of a new, everybody gonna end up with solar panels, absolutely. So, I'm already gonna jump on board. That's right, you understand. I mean, this is a new way. A yep. problem, so my way good, right? No, you absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a good get. answer. No, absolutely. Um, the other thing too is like, say so, say I snap my fingers, we get the panels installed, we get you rid of the payment, Tico, you have the fixed payment, and then six months later, you know everything's good, and Tico comes and they knock on your door. And I hate you, We want you to rip the panels off, and we want you to go back to paying us. What would you tell them? Hell yeah, no. <laughs> I like that. That was a test. You passed the final test. Everybody else said yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, like, okay. Right. That's no problem. That's right. But cool. Um, do you have? I mean, do you have any questions for me about anything? Not yet, but I, I'm saving them so I can get out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be around. I'm, I've been all around this area. I mean, I've done all kinds of Silver Lake, Lake, Temple Terrace. I mean, I'm, I'm all around here. Brandon, Riverview, Del Rico, Seminole Heights. West Ham, I don't know. I'm running over all day. I was at Lakewood today. Crazy, I've been running. <laughs> Good though, there's a lot of people making the switch. But, uh, Is a lot of people switching off or is it all that? There's a lot, there's a lot of drama. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes, uh, yesterday I was with four families. So wow, I went, I went they to, did? They switched three, off? Three ended up doing one, couldn't get approved. Uh, so after I sit down and do everything, like, people will do it. It's just, they, it's just they need to understand what's going on. It all comes down to it. But, um, so you don't That's scary. I mean, you know, again, you don't want to be like getting like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's the biggest yeah, thing. I, mean, making, making I know it's, this is going to be a new way. And Biden wanted to be like, I mean, yep. it's, 
They're pushing for you know. They're, they're and incentivizing it. They want to sell of energy to be us. Um, America needs something, you know, yep. that the world needs. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, we need to get on board. It's crazy too. Like if you go, I don't know if you've ever been over to Europe, but like so many people in Europe already have sold. Wow. Know, like Puerto Rico, everyone, everyone's already ahead of the curve. I don't know. Yeah, we be one on time, man. Oh, yeah, right. We should, oh, we should yeah. be ahead. Always. It's like this is the best shit. Yep. They be trying to make the most money though. That's what they greed. Greed. Those companies, that's right. It, it's, it's that's what it is. Though. They yeah. didn't. The reason. Greed. The reason it's gonna happen so fast now is because they didn't start buying the power back. Like Pico didn't do the one to one until like 2020. Wow. So they just got like where it had to buy the power back one to one. That's why you're starting to see it more and more. Wow. You know? But I'm glad you understand. Well, I'm glad it. I got that one to one shit. <laughs> All right. I, I know they're gonna change that shit too. They, they tried to back in 2022. It almost happened, but they already uh. He 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 vetoed it. He stopped it for the year, but they they try to vote on it like every two years. They try to vote on it, change it, but we got a good going. He he protect that one. But um, yeah. that's all there is to it. But um, you have my number. You got my text. Cool. And we're gonna finish up the site survey to get everything started, with you guys, and then you get a call from Kevin like three days, and then hopefully in two weeks they'll get it taken care of. If you have any questions in the meantime, I'll be here too. Whenever the panels are going up, I'll be here for you. All right. I'll break some pizza and whatnot. <laughs> 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 yeah, cool. I appreciate the time. The hospitality. It was a really fun time with you today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're yeah, cool. He's, a, he's the best part. Yeah. Um, is it easier to go up to the back here or do I need to go up to the front to get to the back? Yeah, it's, uh, I got them locked anyway. I don't know you decide the back. Uh, all good. I usually have my drone with me, but I'm going to do it all on foot today. Normally I just want to drone take pictures. But how did we do guys what do you think instant replay yes sir what's your thoughts in and out man it was probably the smoothest deal just very very smooth she was very intently listening because of my tonality with that one i was very serious about listening this mm-hmm. is a problem i want you to understand so you can just make the decision for yourself mm-hmm. told her a to z explained the net meter told her how the net meter is not going to be here forever and that's a big reason why she did it you know she mm-hmm. understands that this is a wave like her reason for doing it at the very end was this is, everyone's doing it already, but she knows that net metering is going to be taken away. You have to explain the mm-hmm. scarcity. Yeah. Not something that everyone can get approved for. Yeah. It's not something that's going to be around forever. You do it now, this is where you're going to see the most savings. So she's happy. We're happy. Ben got to get the, mm-hmm. set this deal of running, man, just really jogging. He's jogging, has a little 15 minute conversation. He's putting thousands of dollars in his pocket. So it's a great day, man. Absolutely crazy. When I, I didn't have it on video, but I just went out for a jog in the rain, mind you. In the rain, in the, in the rain. pouring rain, in a tank top. You don't gotta be wearing polos and that shirt. Why else care? In a p- pouring rain in a tank top, here. soaking wet. I was dripping. Work, and I set the point. So, just absolutely no excuses in the solar. You can't build, get someone emotional to make a decision. People buy off emotion. They're not buying off of logic. They, okay. They they justify it through logic. You know, at the end, she's justifying it. Like, yeah, more and more people are doing it. Yeah, the, it makes sense because. The net meter is not always going to be here, but I got her emotional about it. I mm-hmm. got her, you know, upset. That was the best part, I think. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Yeah. You get emotional first, and then at the end, they're going to justify their decision with logic. And then when she locked it in with saying, yeah, she has the same thing at the post office. She's grandfathered yeah, into the benefits that there. That's so good. Yeah, like, she yes. understood. That was, that was a big reason why she understood it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get lucky like that, but that's why you got to... Uh, yeah. If not, I mean, you always got to thoroughly explain. That's why I take a lot of time with the net meter. 